Master here. I want to share a little bit about my testimony because often people will ask me why I do the things that I do, like what inspires me to uh, go into prisons and go into strip clubs and recovery homes and sometimes the streets. I have a passion to elevate and empower other women. And I want to tell you why, because I am a firm believer that all it takes is one person in your corner cheering you on and encouraging you, loving you and praying for you and with you to see your whole destiny change and see somebody was that one person for me. You know, years ago, um, you know, you may have heard me share the story that I was an alcoholic and a drug addict. I started smoking pot when I was in fifth grade, which I don't know, what's that, 10 years old? I was um, hanging out in a fort around the corner with a bunch of kids my age, and they they were the troublemaking family in the town. Everybody knew that, and uh, their older brothers were drinking beers and passing joints uh, of marijuana, and so as it passed me, as a 10 year old little girl, I started smoking some pot and I started drinking some beer and two things happened. One, I was accepted. I fit in for the first time in my life. I didn't feel like I was invisible. Like these people saw me and they recognized me and they, for a few brief moments, they accepted me. And that felt so good because I was dealing with incredibly low self-esteem and self-hate and um, confusion and a lot of pain and shame and trauma. And so I felt like I fit in. And then two, that the high, the buzz from the marijuana and the alcohol for a little girl, it began to numb the pain. And it was like, hey, this is pretty awesome. Bingo, something to numb this daily pain that I am in. And, um, you know, that was just the beginning of the addiction. It got much worse. I um, stumbled upon my oldest brother's uh, marijuana stash and his pill stash in my house as I was doing some chores. And I helped myself. And that's how I got addicted to speed in my life. I, I liked that feeling as well. I liked the feeling of fitting in. That was my greatest thing. And so when I partied, when I got high, when I uh, did these drugs with kids in the neighborhood, that was the greatest thing. I was accepted and everybody wants to be accepted. And as I went through middle school and well, we used to call it junior high. Now they call it middle school. I would stay at uh, my friend's house a couple blocks away and she had older brothers as well. And we would have keg parties and do drugs all night long, listening to all kinds of crazy music and just drinking nonstop all night long and um, just getting blasted out of my mind. It increased and it increased uh, by high school. I was walking the streets of Camden. If you're not familiar with Camden, it's been labeled the most dangerous state or the most dangerous city in the nation many times. Thankfully, that's no longer their title. And uh, we'd hitchhike, well, my friends would hitchhike. I would walk alone late at night to some really bad areas of Camden. This one kid we hung out with, he had just gotten out of prison for murdering someone. And, um, you know, it just, it's my addictions just took me down. They took me down. I kept going down further and further in my addictions. I was a mess. I, you know, I would drink some, I, I blacked out every single night. I was a teenage, I, I got pregnant as a teenager. I married my boyfriend at the time. We became drug dealers. We were known as the drug dealers in the area with a small son and, um, parties, wild parties at our house all the time. And, up all night long, crawling on the floor, looking for um, one more piece of cocaine that maybe fell, looking through the telephone book. We actually had telephone books back then. And uh, if you don't know what that is, don't worry, send me a message. But we had telephone books. I'd be in the telephone book at three o'clock in the morning trying to find one more bar that was open so that we could get some more alcohol to feed and fuel our addiction. Uh, began smoking cocaine. I um, It just just crazy crazy stuff. And along with all of that, your brain just gets so messed up. I don't know who's old enough on this video to recall the, the uh, 
commercials we used to have and it was um, somebody frying an egg in a really hot sizzling frying pan and it said, this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And that's how it was. That's how it was. And the addiction grew and grew to such a place of insanity that, um, you know, I didn't know how to live with the addiction and I didn't know how to live without the addiction. I hated it. I hated what it was doing to me. It was destroying me, but I didn't know how to live without the drugs and the alcohol anymore. I would write, by this time I had two sons and I would write them goodbye letters every night. I thought for sure I was going to die and people were, like people were dying in the hospital. Their hearts were blowing up from smoking the cocaine and smoking the drugs and um, a lot of people were dying and I thought for sure this is this is it I am going to die as a drug addict and my sons their mother what my sons are going to have at forever as their mother was that their mother was a drug addict who died from drugs and the crazy things that you do the crazy things that you do, the crazy places that you'll go. You know, addiction is not pretty and it doesn't just impact you. It impacts everyone around you. And, um, you know, that's the greatest lie. Somebody who's addicted believes is that, well, it's just their problem. No, if a house is on fire, everybody is going to smell like smoke. So my addiction just took me to places I never thought I would go and I would do do things I never, ever thought I would do. But you know, as I got to a certain point, my ex-husband had left me and um, at that point, I was devastated. I thought I couldn't live. I didn't think I could breathe. I didn't think I could go on, right? But, God, but I did. And um, the beautiful part of the story, the whole illustration that I want to get to is a friend of mine who was my sister-in-law at the time. She jumped into the gutter with me. She jumped into my mess with me. She sat in the dirt with me and loved me when I was unable to love myself. She would speak blessings over me. She would speak kind, wonderful things over me. She would declare destiny over me and she didn't stop loving me. And I didn't know why and how she was doing that. But I will tell you this, what I said at the beginning, when one person believes in you, when one person is praying for you and cheering you on, your entire destiny can change. Now, it didn't happen overnight, and there are thousands of details that I left out, but I'll do more videos with some of those details. But the point in this video is we can be that one person. And the fact that she did that for me is the exact reason that I know now go out and do it for thousands of other women in prisons and strip clubs and recovery homes, because I believe that when we step into somebody's mess, when we step into their dirt and are willing, right, to walk them through and speak life and declare destiny and speak promises that their entire life can change and not only their life, but generations. See, because God radically healed me and set me free from drugs and alcohol and crazy thinking and fear and shame and rejection and regret all these crazy things that go along with it. That low self-esteem that I could never, who am I? I'm filthy. I'm no good. I'm a piece of trash. I began to believe all those labels, but because God set me free, not only am I walking in freedom, I am now a different woman. I am a different mother. I am a different wife. Generations Generations are going to walk in freedom because of the freedom that came into my life. Because I now declare and decree and step into other people's messes. And you better believe I declare and decree over my children. God radically changed my life. And it began with one person stepping into the gutter with me. And because that generations will now walk in blessings and freedom. So that's what I do. And that's why I encourage you. You may not be called to the prisons, to the strip clubs, to the recovery homes or the streets, but you are called somewhere. And I am encouraging you, right, to step into somebody's gutter, 
Step into somebody's mess because see, here's the reality. And I say this all the time. I'm not afraid to step back into hell because I know my way out and I will go in and I will go after my sisters, right? I will go after those still bound in shame and in addiction and in the darkness to help them out. And I'm encouraging you, your life matters. You know, every place in your life where God has set you free, it wasn't just for you. You now have a mission. You now have the ability to go out and step into somebody else's gutter with the light of the gospel, with the truth, with the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the freedom that you walk in, you can now step and jump into somebody else's gutter, into their dirt and help them out. Amen. God set us free so that we could be agents of freedom for others. So I release a blessing over you in the name of Jesus. I speak great favor over your life. I pray destiny. I pray purpose and courage that each one of you would step up, would rise up in that which God has called you to no longer shrink back, but to rise up in your potential and be that one for someone else. Amen. Amen.